Okay, so here we are at a lookout in the Mount uh, Mac Evor Ranges. So this is uh, the Mac Evor uh, sandstone. So as you can see, there's lots of eucalypts and Cassinia. That, that's it, Cassinia. I think that's Cassinia flower uh, plant. These usually flower after, or they come up after the place has been cleared. So there might have been some clearing or just heavy rain. On the surface, we can see a lot of sandstone. So this is a shallow water near shore deposits. So I've done these. Uh, so fine to medium grain sandstone, minor pebbly sandstone and conglomerate thickly bedded and it has shelly fossils so should have brachiopods trilobites maybe it has some um, gastropods uh, this one looks more like volcanic plastic could still be a sandstone I it's just the first time I've seen it so it also could be that because this has been affected by granites so it is formed uh, horn fowls, which is pretty much uh, just the metamorphic rock around a granite intrusion. And it looks like hmm. it looks like an English rock, large. Feldspar crystal there. Oh look, nice purple flowers. Beautiful. So most of the plants here will be indigenous. Probably not that much weeds, but there is some. So yeah, that's crystalline rock. It's probably igneous. No, I don't think it would be indigenous here. It's probably just been brought in for the path. I believe that the sandstones indigenous. What is this? It looks like a mudstone. Yeah, it could be actually part of the rock. We've got large. So this is probably just a web and this is probably fresh. I don't know, I need to look at the actual rock. And here we have the lookout. So what do we have here? Uh, so we've got a walking track, 2.9 kilometers. Power magazine. And here we have some outcrop of the Mac E4 sandstone. So this is uh, a Silurian sandstone laid down roughly about 417 to 415 million years. And there is another one. So this is the Highland member. That is under this. That so should be down there somewhere. And that is uh, also shallow, shallow water. So here we have a beautiful range. So here we are looking. Uh, we're looking west. And down below here we have the Mount. Williams Fault, it's somewhere just below the range, and over probably where that farm is, we have the Heathcote Fault. So, in between, we've got the Greenstone Belt, which has the Cambrian Rocks. The Cambrian Rocks are somewhere in the middle, and over probably over that way, that is where the alluvial workings were. So, that's the pink cliffs that we just visited before quite interesting uh, then we have a ranges over there oh, that that's probably a wombat state forest that I'll need to look up I didn't and somewhere over that way we have uh, tillite from the Permian so it's Permian glaciation it's quite extensive over there so this is Silurian we got Cambrian in here and over that way, 
a lot of the basement rock is Ordovician, so a lot older. So we have a time scale. Okay, so let's talk about the geology. So we have Cambrian rocks here. So they're about 500 million years old. We have two types, we have the lazy bar andesite. And that is what the pink cliffs have intruded into. Uh, so the lazy bar andesite, obviously it's an andesite from an island arc. So the actual andesites where the volcanoes were. And just beyond that, we have the Knowsley East Shale. So that would have been rock that's been weathered off the volcanoes and it has uh, settled down into deep marine hemipelagic sediments so so you've got the volcano where the town is or just beyond the town on this side you've got the four arc basin the other side you've got the back arc basin so you've got sediments that have been weathered and going down into the deep ocean so pretty much all this was deep ocean at one period of time same as here and then you had a violent uh, volcanic arc so somewhere over this way you had a a trench so a convergent plate boundary so this is where another plate has been accreted to the Gondwana during the Cambrian so then after that we had the Ordovician sediments, they're the ones that are beyond the Heathcote Fault being deposited. So they're also deep marine. And after they were deposited, we had the, uh, let's have a look. Okay. Okay, we had the Benambran deformation. So it's uh, that was a 70% shortening. So you've got one kilometer of land, it was shortened into 300 meters. So those rocks are heavily deformed. Then we have the laying of Silurian sediments, so that's where we are now. Quite beautiful. And then we had the Taberoberian deformation, which deformed this rock, but it also deformed the rock over there. So the Ordovician and the Cambrian rock were more deformed. And not only that, is during the deformation, this rock was thrust faulted over itself, especially the Cambrian. The Cambrian rock, looked on a genealogical map, it looks like they were thrust faulted about seven or eight times on top of each other. But the Silurian a rock well, is underneath. So this Cambrian or Devisian rock was thrust faulted up on top of the actual Silurian. And also the Cambrian rock was also thrust faulted on top of each other. But I'm not too sure. The Ordovician rock was thrust folded on each other. So after that, we had the granite intrusions. So they show up along the actual town axis, going all the way up north. Oh look, sandstone. And then after that, there was just major uplift. So all this is uplifted during uh, the Devonian, pretty much, and it was all just dry land, so it's been eroded ever since. And in the Devonian, we also had, um, oh, not that Devonian, in the Permian, we had a great like, glaciation, but that was like 200 years hiatus. So that's the actual uh, simple geological story of this place. And then we just have, in different places, just weathered material that's accumulated in, um, like the what's this formation ah, yeah the White Hills gravels which form all on the Ordovician place where and also those form deep leads and shallow leads so, but there's also different formations that form deep and shallow leads all the leads are over this side there is no leads over that side so if you want to look for gold you need to look over this way i think a lot of them have been mined so here we have the actual sandstone 
run your hand across it, you can feel the actual sand texture, so that's coarse grain. Coarse sand, probably medium sand actually. But this has been weathered for quite a long time, so I don't see any fossils on the surface. So all you'll be looking for is uh, pretty much bivalves, trilobites, uh, probably some gastropods. You'll probably also get some um, echinoids, so starfish, lustoids, crinoids. Uh, probably also it, uh, some other scarce type of uh, fossils. People scratch their name into this, quite nice. Anyway, yeah, I'd say if, if you wanted fossils, you need to break it open, but because this is a national park, you're not allowed to do that, especially on camera. Pretty big ants. Okay. Who is that? Albert Harry, 1927 to 2018, and his loving wife, Anna Jones McHenry, 1928 to 2021, forever in the hearts. Wonder what happened here. So as you can see, this uh, this material is pretty much highly weathered and eroded. Just be careful, snakes. Won't have you for dinner. So, So this formation forms strike ridges or homocline. So strike ridges where you have the formation, so that's the normal way. Sedimentation, when it's faulted you have ridges like this, then you have a thick on one side and you have just a undulating um, just a Oh, this is dipping into the actual uh, formation. So that would be, I think it's dipping this way though. But I don't see anything resembling, this looks like just a massive formation so can't really tell if there's any, any type of uh, bedding. In the actual rock. <laughs> Over that way, you just have low and undulating hills, so they're just the two types. So they're just small hills, um, shallow valleys. This side we have mountain ranges and deep valleys. So um, let's have a look at sandstone. And so this is still weathered, but still nearly fresh. So this is not probably not the place to actually find shelly fossils. You can 
see the soils actually turn brown.